All right, y'all. I ain't gonna go into the whole spiel today. You know who I am. You know what I do. There's no point in going in all that. And I told you guys yesterday in a short little video that uh, I was gonna stop focusing on these videos and start focusing on my podcast, and I am doing that. Uh, there's a new episode up today on Spotify uh, of Country Coffee Chats with Cheryl, and it is uh, all about civility and lack of civility, and it is uh, has a great interview with Justin Bradford about the struggles that he and his family have been forced to endure by targeted and harassment uh, from members of the more powerful members of the Moore County uh, right-wing Republican Party. So I hope everybody will go check that out. And I'm sorry, uh, you know, I, I said in that little video yesterday that occasionally I would have to do one of these videos because something would happen I would have to react to, you know, outside of a podcast, and it, it's already happened. Um, you know, about a week and a half ago, give or take, it was it was discovered by a community member that Shannon Davis is, I guess he's her ex-husband, they're saying now, um is a career criminal with a, a record as long as my arm that he was actually in the Moore County Jail on uh, a couple of Fridays ago um, on charges and that, you know, we're talking about serious uh, convictions this guy's got here, uh, you know, weapons charges. I mean, these are some serious felonies. These these aren't no little, uh, you know, petty crimes. <clears throat> this guy's, uh, like I said, a career criminal, um, you know. And somebody discovered that, and eventually, you know, the screenshots made their rounds to the usual suspects, and somebody finally decided to post it online, and, you know, everybody lost their mind about it, and, you know, how could y'all be so cruel, how could you be so reckless, and, you know, I, uh, if you listen to my coffee chat today, you, you're going to hear about, about how much I care about being cruel, being called cruel and, re cruel and reckless. I mean, I ain't the one who put that stuff out there, but... You know, I ain't gonna say that I <clears throat> didn't find the whole thing a little amusing, and in fact, I felt I found it so amusing that last night when I saw that on the agenda of the Moore County Board of Education meeting today, Shannon Davis was pushing a uniform policy for the kids in Moore County schools. You know, I made a joke, I made a meme, uh, pe people in prison uh, outfits, and said, you know, of course she wants uniforms for. Uh, the kids in Moore County Schools because it works so well for her husband. And, oh, man, if people didn't start losing their minds about that. You know, you had David Hensley going on and spewing a bunch of his nonsense about the leftist playbook, you know, holding people responsible for their husbands or their wives' behavior. And this is a man who has made a point of doing that. You know, this is a guy who threatened to write the commanding officer of someone who was serving in the Army, serving honorably in the Army because he didn't like something his wife said to him on Facebook. And, you know, every time uh, Mrs. Bradford posts anything, you know, David Hensley pops up in the comments of her posts, you know, putting screenshots of things that have come out of her husband's mouth, things that have come out of Justin Bradford's mouth, you know, so what about your husband? Why aren't you, you know, saying, you know, holding her accountable for, you know, whatever cuss word or, you know, unsavory language comes out of Justin's mouth, you know? And, you know, he is the original person who went on the pilot's comments and posted uh, some of my personal history, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Um, you know, but I don't, David Hensley is so, uh, it's so easy to knock down his mask because, you know, we, we have so much uh, evidence on his smarmy tactics and how he has involved the family members of, of people who politically disagree with him and how he has gone after people gone after their businesses and gone after their personal associations and that sort of stuff, so I ain't worried about it. But then, of course, Emily Grave Rainey, you know, she's out there posting, CCB made a meme and she knows why. <laughs> Emily, 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 first of all, even if everything you said about me in your little post was true, it wouldn't matter. And I'm going to get, I'm gonna get to, to that in a minute. It wouldn't matter. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, you need to be careful about what you say. And, and especially people who comment on your page need to be careful what they say. Because, yeah, there was a time in my life when I was completely and totally, uh, uh, you know, close to destitute. Didn't have the money to fight back. But that's not where I am right now. And, um, you know, slander is a real thing. And if I have to hire an attorney to, to get, get you to keep my, my children's names out of your mouth or mentioning them, then I will do so. 
So some of what Emily Grave Rainey posted about me is true. I was involved at one point uh, several years ago in a romantic relationship with a man that had some legal problems. Okay, you know, he had some serious child support, back child support issues, and uh, you know, he he was a registered sex offender. He had a conviction for taking indecent liberties with a minor, and how that whole thing came about, you know, is really none of anybody's business. Okay. Well, that relationship caused a lot of damage in my life. A lot of damage financially, personally, damage to my family, damage between me and my family. Okay? But I'm not an elected official and I'm not running for office, so I don't really see how it's relevant in anything. And yeah, in 2020, when I was working in a convenience store, I got a ticket for selling one can of beer to one 20 year old. I've been over that and over that. I've been very public about it. I posted about it multiple times on More Voices. I did my community service uh, for the ticket that I got right out in the, in the open, you know. And for the fact for Miss Rainey to say I have convictions for selling alcohol to minors. Let's see it, Emily. Put up or shut up. Let's see all those convictions for selling alcohol to minors. Sh Sherry Vrindenberg. Let's see him. And then the conversation kind of uh, devolved from there, okay? You know, but I, I'm address uh, another one of Ms. Rainey's uh, lies, which I have addressed publicly. And, you know, the, def the definition of slander is saying something that you, you know is not true. And I know she knows this is not true because we've interacted, uh, and I've interacted with her minions um, before about this issue. Uh, first of all, both of my children were adults when I was involved in this personal relationship with this, this man who had uh, some legal issues. They were both adults, and neither one of them lived with me at the time. To say that I gave him access to my handicapped daughter is not only slander against me, but against her father, who she lived with at that time. And i got to tell you, you know, he already has got a really good attorney. Okay. And then Sherry Vrindenberg and James Peterson's come busting up into the comments accusing me of all kind of things, including bigamy. Bigamy. Because in the year 2000, there was a lady named Cheryl Lynn Bowman living in, I believe, uh, I don't know, Ashboro, whatever county that is, Randolph County. Living in Randolph County, maybe Montgomery County, I don't remember. And she was married to a guy, I think his name was Tamoris Davis, who was also married to somebody else at the time. And... You know, Emily Grave and James Peterson and Miss Vrindenberg have come at me over and over again trying to claim that that was me. Not, well, not only is it not me, first of all, it's a different age, different race, different spelling of the name. Um, and at the time that this bigamous relationship took place, I was married to my first husband. In, in fact, was was pregnant with my second child. My first husband's name certainly was not Tamara's Davis. That wasn't me. And I've told you all over and over that wasn't me, and I've proved over and over again in a public forum that that wasn't me. But you, you're going to keep saying it? Y'all will lie when the truth will do. If you're trying to impugn my character, well, I would think the fact that I admitted that I was involved in a relationship with this guy and that I have admitted that I got a ticket for selling one can of beer to one 20-year-old, I would think that that would be enough to impugn my, my, my character. But y'all got to make up all this other crazy shit? Provable lies. But I'm going to tell you something more important than that. Okay? It wouldn't matter if everything... Oh, and, and Miss Vrindenberg, you want to know how many times I've been divorced? I've been divorced twice. I've been divorced twice. Neither one of my ex-husbands are habitual felons. In fact, neither one of my ex-husbands are felons at all. Have any sort of criminal record at all. But I've been divorced twice, since you want to know. And I might have been involved in a man with legal issues, but I wasn't involved with him for 20 years. I didn't have his children. I didn't marry him. And even if I had, even if I had done every single thing you guys are out there claiming that I did, wouldn't matter. Because I'm not an elected official. I'm not running for public office, and I'm not asking for people's votes. Whatever bad judgment that I have 
had in my life has affected my personal life, the lives of my family, but it don't affect the 12,000 plus students in Moore County Schools. It's the bottom line. Shannon Davis lied. It was a lie of a mission. She ran her entire campaign on pureness and piety and good Christian values, convinced the entire community that her judgment was so pure and so good that they, that they can trust, uh, that they should trust the children, the safety and security and the education of the children in Moore County Schools to her. And she hid the fact that she had this long-term relationship, you know, with a career criminal, She's out there judging everybody else, judging their personal relationships, judging their life choices, judging whether or not they have the right to exist. And she can't even keep her own backyard swept up. And she hid it. And everybody who supported her who knew about it hid it. Because they didn't want the, the voters of Moore County to be able to ask Miss, Miss Davis about her judgment. Okay? Y'all want to rag on me for messing up my personal finances and, and, you know, messing up some of my family relationships, but I, you know what? I never asked anybody else to rely on my good judgment, and I certainly never uh, ran for elected board where I was going to be doing not only the public business, but being directly responsible with my judgment for making decisions for over 12,000 children who live in Moore County. And that's why y'all are mad. That's why you're mad. Because you got away with it. And it was only by happenstance that any of this ever came out to begin with. So do I hold Miss Davis accountable for the actions of her husband or ex-husband or baby daddy, whatever he is? No, I don't. But I do think her judgment is fair game. And I do think if this had been made public before the election and she had explained it to the voters of Moore County, it, it would be different than, you know, it just popping up on, on people's Facebook feeds one day. I don't know Shannon Davis. I know I don't like her. Y'all out there talking about how she's a good Christian person and all I hear is her out there, you know, talking about gay people shouldn't be allowed to exist and they ought to be, you know, treated like they're drug addicts and, and she's standing up there, you know, demanding that our, our children curriculum be written around her own personal uh, interpretation of the King James Version of the Bible. I know that she voted for a policy that was blatantly written to discriminate against LBGTQ plus kids. Okay. I know that she spends an awful lot of time sitting in judgment of other people. And she's not being honest about her own problems, her own lack of judgment. One last thing, and I'm going to sign off on this video. If it was only me that were having these lies told about them, okay, they're having, you know, their most private, painful things that happened in their life dug up and posted online, if it was only me, I probably wouldn't be as angry about it as I am, but it's not just me. There are many people who are being targeted and harassed, having their ability to make a living interfered with, having their families stalked. And some of the stuff that's being said about them is either wildly exaggerated or, or has no basis in the truth whatsoever. And y'all ain't mad about that. But you're mad that when something is provably true from public record that it is embarrassing to one of your people comes to light. Now y'all mad. Well, like I have said over and over again, y'all sitting up there in a glass house, you know, throwing stones at us when the secrets you guys are keeping are way worse than what you guys say you're exposing about leftists. It's not just Shannon Davis. There's other stuff that's going to come out.
Like I said in a Facebook post not too long ago, some of these people have been sitting up there being all Judgy McJudgerson about the personal lives of other people and, you know, trying to go around and making their lives a living hell. Y'all better uh, get down on your knees and start practicing up on your I have sin speeches. Talk to you guys later. Do not forget about the Board of Education meeting tonight. They're going to appoint uh, somebody to the Sand Hills Board of Trustees. Uh, my money is, is on that wingnut job. Steve Woodward, um, you know, uh, so uh, they're going to do that. They're going to talk about this uh, this um, policy, uh, uniform policy, and I would just remind everybody who sends children to the Moore County, board, uh, Moore County School System, if they pass a uniform policy and you don't want to uh, have your child wear a uniform, you have the right because we have a, a new policy called the Parents' Bill of Rights, which puts the parent 100% in charge. All you got to do is say your religion or your culture. Or, or your family traditions uh, do not allow you to conform to a dress code and, you know, problem solved. I wouldn't worry about that. They're going to set the new school calendar. Uh, th there's a couple, you know, uh, it, it, it should be a good meeting tonight. And um, everybody, um, don't forget about it. Hop on over to Spotify and listen to today's podcast. It's a great interview with Justin Bradford. I think it, it a lot of people will be surprised at the links that certain people in our community went through to try to break him and break his family. I'll talk to you all later.